Hey there, I'm Leah Laelima Rose, a designer, animator, and entrepreneur with over a decade of experience in countless projects ranging from small character animations to global retail visualizations and everything in between. Today, I'm partnering with Autodesk to show you the step-by-step -step process of how I create 3D assets in 3ds Max and use them to visualize products. Our product is simple, a Tome of Summoning Monster reference card, which we'll take through a complete workflow of modeling, texturing, animating, lighting, and rendering to produce images and videos we can use in design and marketing. After watching these tutorials here on the 3ds Max Learning Channel, you can also check out the How I Made It in 3ds Max series on Autodesk's Media and Entertainment YouTube channel, where we take everything we learned here and apply it to a more complex animated product visualization. So make sure you visit that after you've completed these tutorials. Now, with that, before we even get into 3ds Max itself, uh, let's review the, the files that we're going to be needing here on my desktop. You're going to see I have a folder where I keep all of the textures and other files that I'll be needing. Here we have the lay flat texture of the card itself, the dryad. You can see the back and the front are here and the inside fold is also here. Now what's also important to have on hand is the spec sheet of the product that you're going to be building in 3ds Max. This will have the important dimensions that you need to refer to while you're building this in 3D space as we're trying to build something to scale and would be useful to have when scaling it with other products so that everything kind of works together. Now with these files collected in one place, we can start by opening up 3ds Max. Now, in my opinion, the best way to make something in 3ds Max is the way that works for you. That being said, the way I'm going to show you is the way that worked for me and my project. But don't take that as the only way to make things. As you can see here, I have a default scene of 3ds Max. Now, the first thing that I like to do with any project is establish a project folder. And I like to use 3ds Max default project file system. So when you go into file, you go into project and you select create default. This will create an entire project folder structure for you. Essentially, this is a way for 3ds Max to automatically keep everything together in one giant folder structure. Now we go to create default and inside my 3D work folder, I'm going to call it TOS 3D project and select folder. Great, so now we can see up here in the folders toolbar, we can see that our project has been assigned to the Tome of Summoning 3D project folder. Now on top of that, I like to be safe and save my first scene. Go to file, save as. When you save a scene, uh, it will automatically open up your scenes folder in your project folder. Now, if you don't know where that is, we can open up the 3D project and we can see all the folders that are made when the default project is made. So the scenes are right here. So now you can see Autodesk tutorial, TOS 3D projects, scenes. We're gonna be making the Dryad reference card. So let's call this scene the Dryad card. So now that we have a scene saved, uh, this file now has the auto backup running and everything. You're ready to go, ready to start making things. Now, we're gonna start by uh, modeling this simple card. I like to model in perspective mode, which for something this simple, uh, hover over your perspective window over here and press Alt-W to maximize it. And just as a review, to navigate in 3D space, you can hold the middle mouse button to pan. You can hold Alt middle mouse button to orbit and rotate around. And you can also use the scroll wheel to zoom in and out. And if you find yourself getting lost in topsy-turvy, you can always refer to the view cube up here and press the home icon to put you back into the default view. 
Now from here, we're going to start building. Let's start by making a plane, um, a three and a half by five inch plane. Pretty simple. Now with in the create geometry standard primitives plane, we select it and we can draw as many planes as we want out. But let's start with just one. Right click to get out of it. And now that we have our plane selected, let's start to modify it and get those dimensions in. Up in the tab, up in the tabs on the right side, you have the modify tab. And here we'll get into all the details of this simple piece of geometry. Now, let's start by renaming this. This is going to be the Dryad card. And let's go into the parameters and let's look at the dimensions that we have. Now, if you don't have your inches or units set up, you can change that by going to the customize um, menu and go into unit setup. You may have generic units or metric. Um, for this one, I'm going to use US standard feet with decimal inches. You can have that selected and press OK. And uh, from there, you can go into your parameters and start putting in the dimensions that you need. We're going to go with length five inches and width three and a half inches as following the specifications that we had laid out. Now, um, here in the parameter section, there is also a length segments and a width segments. Now, we can't really see the segments right now because we're in a view, um, a shading view or a shading a view option essentially that uh, doesn't highlight the edges on geometry. So let's go into our default shading. Let's turn on edged faces and we can see the actual segments, the vertexes and edges that make up our piece of geometry. It's just, it's good so that we can see what geometry we're actually working with. Uh, now let's set these segments down to one and we have our simple flat plane. Now with this selected, in my particular way of doing things, I like to zero all of my models out into, into 3D space. Now right now that's not zero, that's off center. So let's go to our move tool, select and move or hotkey W, and we can try to move this to get to the center. Now trying to move it by hand, you're not gonna get it perfectly on zero, zero, zero. But down here, you can see we have the actual coordinates uh, in inches. And I'm just gonna zero these out. You can right click the bottom arrow to zero them out. And there we go. Simple, easy. Now that the plane is made, we this could be our card, but cards are not just single planes. There's going to be a little bit of thickness. Uh, that'll add to the realism of the card when it's being rendered. So let's add a little bit of thickness by going into our modifier list over here and selecting shell. Shell is a modifier that adds that thickness for us, uh, but this thickness is way too thick for the card. So let's go into our parameters and let's bring it down to 0.005. That should be good, I'd say. Just gets enough thickness so that it can be seen in renders that we are going to be making. So now that our plane has some thickness to it, we're going to add a little, uh, another edge to it so that we can fold this card in half. Uh, let's go into the modifier panel and make an edit poly modifier. And if you don't know, you can go into the modifier list and you can type in the actual modifier you're looking for, which edit poly is going to be E, D, and we have edit poly. Otherwise, you could just open it and scroll down to look for things such as the shell modifier here. But we're looking for the edit poly, which and alphabetically is here, edit poly. So now with that, let's make ourselves a crease. Now we could make the crease by making a little quick slice here and just bloop, hey, look at that. But I am far too particular about um, coordinates and 
uh, making sure that our specs are perfectly met. So let's undo that with Control Z, get out of this uh, quick slice, and let's go over to the edge selection right here. And we're going to select the edges, all the edges that are around this very thin box we've created essentially. So be sure that all of these edges are created so that we can create an, a line that goes through all of them. Now, what we can do is by going down to the edit edges, we can go to connect. And that will, if you think about it, connect all of these edges together with another edge that is equal, that is right at the center of this edge. Now that works out perfectly for us because it cuts it directly in half. All right, now with that, we pretty much have the model set up most of the way for what we are going to be doing to it. We're going to be folding it in half. But first, before we fold it in half, we're going to put the textures on it.